This is CNN. On this patch of high plains, in the shadow of the Rocky Mountains, wildlife abounds on the surface. But in the soil and water below is an environmental disaster. You are about to visit 27 square miles of the most badly poisoned land on Earth. For 40 years, this was a death factory. The U.S. Army made poison gas here, mustard gas, phosgene, nerve agent. And here also the Shell Oil Company produced pesticides, Aldrin and Dieldrin, so dangerous they are now banned. The factory is shut down now, but there remains a cleanup job so enormous, so expensive, so hazardous, that a century from now it may still be dangerous for human beings to live here, or even near here. Welcome to the Rocky Mountain Arsenal. Once fertile farmland, the Arsenal Section 36 is now a toxic desert, perhaps the single most polluted square mile in the United States. What happened here at the Arsenal is a story of human ignorance, bureaucratic indifference, and corporate greed, a story that is still unfolding. The cleanup will take decades. We're about in the middle of the process right now, and we'll probably be here for the final cleanup until the year 2005, 2010. The arsenal's poisoned earth borders on Denver's Stapleton Airport, prime land for commercial development or a wildlife preserve. Nature struggles gamely where Shell dumped pesticides and the Army dumped leftovers from poison gas production. But government studies show the arsenal is hazardous to many of the wild creatures living here. You cannot drink the water and you cannot breathe the air. But the sky is ripping open and you still don't seem to care. Prairie dogs and deer mice burrow in the contaminated earth. They become poisoned food for hawks, owls, golden eagles, and coyotes. Some of those predators have died of pesticide poison. Can't you see the shadow that moves across this land? Can't you see the shadow that moves across this land? The bald eagle. More than 40 of these endangered birds roost and feed here in the winter. Federal wildlife officials worry and take blood samples. The bald eagles show no sign of pesticide poisoning so far. Lucky! Lucky! Not only Lucky. animals are affected. For decades, contamination has flowed downhill from the arsenal into the well water used by humans. In Henderson, today, people are scared. I've got a two-year-old baby that's got just eczema already. I have to be afraid for my family and for my children because one of the, one of the most frightening things about chemicals is that it, it usually takes a long time for them to take the effect on a human body. Henderson residents now drink bottled water. It's supplied by the Colorado Department of Health and the federal EPA. The cost, $100,000 a year. The reason, Henderson well water is contaminated with a colorless, odorless liquid chemical called diisopropyl methylphosphonate, or DIMP. There's no question where DIMP comes from, the Army. DIMP is a um, chemical compound that's unique to Rocky Mountain Arsenal. It's a byproduct of uh, a nerve agent manufacture. There's no conclusive evidence that DIMP is harmful to humans, but one disturbing study suggests it may be. Scientists fed tiny amounts of DIMP to 71 female minks. Before the year-long test was over, 10 of them died, a death rate of 14%. 
Despite that, the federal EPA says that humans can safely drink water containing up to 600 parts per billion of DIMP. But Colorado officials, relying on the mink study, say the safe level should be only two parts per billion. It's the opinion of the Colorado Department of Health that DIMP and the concentrations that exist in people's drinking water uh, does pose a health threat. I'm very frightened, extremely, as a matter of fact. You know, I have uh, literally cried over this situation. But the Army and the EPA insist that DIMP is no threat to humans. The source of your drinking water is from a, a well, right? Yes, uh-huh. Tests show Henderson's wells contain up to 148 parts per billion of DIMP, safe according to the federal government, unsafe according to the state government. While government officials argue, Benny Muniz worries. I don't want my children to be the guinea pigs so that they can say in 15 years, yes, there is something in, about DIMP. One nation under God, indivisible. But division is an arsenal legacy. We thought it was high time that we brought the citizens together and explain what the status was of these interim response actions that we're performing as far as the, part of the contamination cleanup. And, uh, the Army tries to explain itself in public meetings. But many of the Army's neighbors are losing faith in their government. I feel like we're foes instead of friends because I'm stuck. I can't afford to dig a deeper well. For now, I'm at your mercy. In a moment, we'll look at just how the Rocky Mountain Arsenal became poisoned earth. And we'll ask who is to blame. In the jungle, business travelers follow the law of natural selection, seeking hotels for comfort, great service, inns when they have an instinct for value, resorts to replenish their spirits, all suites for more territory. Nobody respects this law of natural selection more than ITT Sheridan, the natural choice. A lot of you insist on eating wheat thins and oat thins because they taste good. But the whole idea behind these crackers is that you can eat them without feeling guilty. That's why they're baked, not fried. I mean, eat them because they're delicious, and you miss the whole point. When you smile in, it's hard to smile when your teeth need help. Original milk bone and tonic control biscuits help you take care of your dog's teeth. Give your dog something to smile about. When you smile in. In my considered opinion, it's okay to enjoy mowing one's lawn. Oh, for heaven's sake. In fact, my snapper significantly enhances my sense of well-being. Of course, my snapper dealer was kind enough to offer a 14-day money-back test drive. The good man really stands behind his machines. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional help. That's right. See your snapper dealer. Anything less just won't cut it. I tell my son, before you go off to play, you better eat a good breakfast. Experts recommend whole grain. Wheaties has it. These cereals don't. So if you want to get your whole grain, better listen to your mom. Better eat your Wheaties. Quit stealing my life. <laughs> Burning oil wells at a gulf clogged with crude. Lasting effects of Saddam Hussein's war strategy. The Earth's been a victim in more than one military campaign. And America may be guilty, too. Environmental war crimes. Monday, 6 Eastern on The World Today. ago there were farms and homes here now denver's rocky mountain arsenal is one of the worst toxic waste dumps in the united states who is to blame for what happened here answering that requires some historical perspective when this poison gas facility was built protecting nature was a minor worry civilization was engulfed by war it was 1942. Hitler was on the march. Japan had attacked. 
And for the U.S. Army, it wasn't a case of whether the enemy would use poison gas, but when. When the gas warfare phase comes, it'll be when Hitler, with his back to the wall, frantically uses gas as a last resort. So plowshares became swords. The Army seized farms and homes for a factory to make its own chemical weapons. Here on the outskirts of Denver, Colorado, is the newest of our arsenals, the Rocky Mountain Chemical Warfare Arsenal. It is located completely out of the range of any possible air threat. In the desperate heat of war, little thought was given to the threat posed by the arsenal itself and its own poisonous waste. Gradually, what began as expediency in wartime became bureaucratic routine in peacetime. After the war, the Army built new facilities at the arsenal to make a more modern chemical weapon, nerve agent but the Army kept using the same primitive disposal methods. There was no question about it. When we wanted to get rid of anything in the old days, you know what you did with it. You just took it out and dumped it. We didn't have to worry about the EPA and all this other business. The government says the Army dumped up to 52 million pounds of hazardous chemicals here, but the Shell Oil Company dumped even more. It made insecticides, aldrin and dieldrin and it dumped an estimated 300 million pounds of dangerous chemicals. A lot of that toxic waste ran through clay sewers into unlined ponds with dirt bottoms. But the ponds leaked, contaminating the water below. In 1954, crops on nearby farms began dying. The Army paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to settle farmers' claims. The Army and Shell stopped using those unlined basins in 1956, but today the basins are still a toxic wasteland. You still have the residual soil contamination since 1956 that's there. It's predominantly heavy metals uh, and pesticides and herbicide residues that are located in it, and it's, very, it's in very high concentrations. Near those basins, both the Army and Shell also dumped hazardous solid waste into open trenches. We would load these 55-gallon drums on a big truck and take the truck out to uh, the trenches and dump the 55-gallon drums into the trenches. Former Shell laborer Wallace Peglau testified in a recent trial about the dumping. They would hit the other drums that were down in the trenches. Some of the bungholes would pop off. Sludge would come out. Shell pesticides also leaked into lakes that were not intended as disposal sites. One spill in 1954 killed all the fish. And for years, hundreds of ducks also died along these shores. Oh, it wouldn't be uncommon to pick up in December, January, and February, those months, uh, 150 to 200 birds a month. Back then, Marvin Smith was a Colorado state wildlife official. Not only was the stench of the chemical strong in the, in the water, but then some of the dead birds had been there for maybe a week or two weeks, then the stench from the dead and dying birds and in all states of decay. It was just disgusting. Smith complained about the poisonings. He says Shell's plant manager responded with a lecture on business economics. The name is Morgan Williams. Told me, Mr. Smith, that's just the price of doing business. The price of doing a very profitable business. In the early 1970s, Shell's profits at the arsenal averaged between $1 million and $2 million per month. Shell says it didn't feel then and does not feel now that damage to the environment is compatible with good business operations. During the 1960s, Shell poured its liquid waste into a new pond built by the Army, a 93-acre toxic lake called Basin F. Basin F was lined with a sheet of asphalt about as thick as the sole of a shoe. In 1966, Army officials told Shell its dumping into Basin F, quote, cannot continue. And in this 1970 letter, the Army notified Shell that Basin F's asphalt liner had deteriorated in spots and that it was presumed to be leaking. But the Army allowed Shell to continue pouring waste into Basin F for eight years more. 
Shell officials said they could see no evidence that Basin F leaked. But Basin F was leaking. That was confirmed in 1988 when cleanup workers drained the basin and dug under the asphalt lining. They took a backhoe and dug, and the uh, deeper they dug, the worse the ground was getting to look. More sludge, just slush. Not only did the basin leak, but the old clay sewers leaked too. In 1960 alone, 20,000 gallons per day of chemical waste was leaking out of the pipes and into the soil. Four or five times, sections of pipe collapsed, backing up the sewers. Shell fixed those leaks when the backups forced a stop in its lucrative pesticide production. Shell was a company that knew how to do it right and chose to do it wrong for money. The cleanup will probably cost more than $1 billion, and Shell's insurance companies refuse to pay Shell's part of the bill. There's a fundamental principle of liability insurance. You pay for mistakes. And what the Shell Oil Company did at the Rocky Mountain Arsenal over 30 years was no mistake. It was deliberate, intentional pollution to save money. Shell sued its insurance companies. During the 14-month-long trial, Shell said it had relied on the Army for proper disposal of its waste. But the jury didn't buy that. Shell was so blatant. I think uh, the posture that Shell uh, took all through the trial uh, led me to believe that they should pay to help clean up that arsenal. Shell is appealing that verdict, and Shell officials would not appear before our cameras while their case is pending. In another lawsuit, the U.S. government also accused Shell of major responsibility for the pollution. And Shell has agreed to settle that suit by paying hundreds of millions of dollars of the cleanup cost. But the Army was a polluter, too. And it was the Army's sewers and basins that leaked. And it was the Army as Shell's landlord that allowed Shell's profitable pollution to continue for so long. And so the taxpayers will have to pay for most of the cleanup. In a moment, we'll look at the Army's cleanup, a cleanup that itself has quite literally made people sick. Oil changes, brake service, tune-ups. Maintaining an automobile may be harder on your checkbook than you think. Unless you consider an Audi, then we pay for all that. Visit your Audi dealer before June 10th for Audi Spring Values. When the stranger brought that bullseye, a showdown was a brewing. There was Heinz and Hunts and Masterpiece all trying to outdo him. But as the sweet smoke rose from the grill, the stranger showed his best. Knowing once folks tried that big, bold taste, that bullseye'd stand the test. And throughout the land, every woman and man marveled at the feet. In showdown after showdown, bullseye can't be beat. The big, bold taste of bullseye can't be beat. Evidently, some people have money to burn. Why else would they pay an outrageous fee to carry a simple credit card? When they could carry the Discover card, the card that charges no annual fee, yet pays cash back on every charge, which means it puts money into your pocket. Instead of burning a hole in it, it pays to Discover. If all you need is a room for the night, any of these will do. Of course, the accommodations have a sameness to them. There's a better choice. Radisson. Why get a room when you can get a Radisson? Beautiful Jacqueline Bassett, Ted Turner, Bill Murray, and more. All in the lineup next week on Larry King Live, 9 Eastern on CNN. Poisoned water. It's being treated here, treated to make it safe for humans to drink. Water poisoned by the U.S. Army and the Shell Oil Company. 
water poisoned by waste from Denver's Rocky Mountain Arsenal. The Irondale Trailer Park is just outside the arsenal, a little over a mile from Basin F, which used to be a 93-acre lake of poisonous brine. It contained tons of cancer-causing chemicals, and it leaked. In 1988, the Army drained Basin F and started a cleanup. But according to residents, that cleanup literally gassed Irondale. Sometimes it'd come through, it'd chase me out of my house, it'd chase me out of my garage, it'd chase me out of my yard. Irondale residents complained of vomiting, dizziness, loss of memory, numbness, tingling feelings, irregular menstrual periods. Month after month, some moved away. Officially, the Army calls the Basin F cleanup a success story and insists that it produced nothing worse than a bad smell. It doesn't smell good, but we could not find, and we made an attempt in terms of studies and taking samples uh, of whether or not there was an actual health problem, and we could not determine it. So it was just an odor problem? From everything that we know and that we were able to ascertain, that's correct. No, it was not an odor problem. Colorado health officials disagree. There were levels of, of pesticides and solvents in the air that, um, although you can't smell them, uh, th their presence were detected in, in air monitoring stations. Just over a mile away from Irondale, fumes became so bad that all cleanup workers without protective clothing were twice evacuated for their own safety, once on December 5, 1988, and again on December 12. They just pulled out of it because it, they evacuated the whole uh, job. It put off like a bluish green haze. They pulled us out. They should have uh, just evacuated everything all around out there. But nobody warned Irondale. The same army contractor responsible for the cleanup, a company called Ibasco, was also responsible for monitoring any air pollution caused by the cleanup. The Army says Ibasco's tests showed no dangerous contamination in the air near Irondale. But most of the tests were made with electronic instruments that, according to their own manufacturers, were not designed to detect dangerous levels of pesticides under the conditions Ibasco used them. Looking back, were those tests reliable? Could have been some questions on it, because the instruments were not designed to be used in that type of weather. Ibasco did conduct more reliable tests using robot stations to take air samples for each 24-hour period. Nabasco sent the samples to a laboratory for full analysis, but only some of the samples were analyzed. You would not submit all those readings in every day for analyzation. You would submit a random selection of them. So you didn't necessarily submit the ones for the worst day. In fact, records show no laboratory analysis for what were perhaps the two worst days, December 5th or December 12th, the days Abasco evacuated its own workers. And it was explained to me that it was the cost factor. To have these samples tested was very expensive, so to save money was a main concern. Abasco officials would not talk for our cameras. They sent a letter. The letter said, quote, no safety issue was ever compromised to save money. Ibasco also said its air testing was, quote, extensive and thorough. But workers say Ibasco at times deceived the Environmental Protection Agency. The whole thing was a joke. Uh, we knew when EPA was coming out. We knew when the governor was coming out. That's when we were told to drive slower, don't stir up dust. Otherwise, there was just tons and tons of dust in the air. The soil was heavily contaminated with pesticides. Abasco says roadways were constantly watered to reduce dust, and Abasco denied timing the watering to coincide with EPA visits. Meanwhile, the Army awarded Abasco $700,000 for finding ways to cut costs. Abasco still holds four contracts for cleanup work at the arsenal, totaling $25 million. 
As for Irondale residents, they sued the federal government for damages. But a judge ruled that the government is immune from such claims, and the case is still on appeal. The cleanup of the arsenal and what happened in 88 destroyed everything that we had thought we had planned for our, our long time retirement and for our future. It altered all of our plans. It, uh, it just changed everything that we had been striving for. 29 years ago, Rachel Carson helped launch the environmental movement with her book, Silent Spring. And in it, she described the poisoning of crops by contaminated groundwater here at the arsenal. She also said, this extraordinary episode may easily be only the first of many like it. Today, there are thousands of toxic waste sites in the United States waiting to be cleaned up. If the past is any guide, this could be the future of toxic waste cleanups. Billions spent only to have more Irondales, more Ibascos. I'm Brooks Jackson, CNN Special Assignment.